Hey there, glad you can make it. Alright, this is the second video for section 1.1, which is about applying properties of real numbers. And in this video, we're actually going to talk about the properties of real numbers. Whereas in the last one, we talked about what are the subsets of real numbers, and we talked about how you order real numbers. Two goals here, as with the previous video, although one is more important than the other. And the first of those goals is that you will be able to use special properties for adding and multiplying real numbers. And these are properties that you're familiar with, things like the inverse property or the associative or commutative property. That's what I'm referring to. And I'll show you how to use those again, just a reminder, and hopefully help you remember which one is which, because that's kind of the tough part with them. Um, and the second thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can subtract and divide by adding and multiplying. Also something you're familiar with, but it's going to help us see where subtraction and division fit in terms of these properties that we're referring to as well when we discuss that. All right, so let's get on to the properties. And the first property of addition and multiplication that I want to talk about is the closure property. Now there's going to be five properties in all that we discuss, and each one is going to work for addition and for multiplication, but not necessarily for subtraction or division or other operations. All right, some will, some won't. And I'll try to describe to you what each of them means. Now, the closure property that you see right here, um, closure happens whenever you take two things from a set and you combine them a certain way and you get something else from that set. Okay, so for instance, if you take two dogs and you mix them, you're going to get dogs, aren't you? So the process of mixing dogs, I guess, breeding dogs, is a closed set. You breed two dogs, you get a dog. And that's what it means um, when we're talking about addition and multiplication, having the closure property. Anytime you add two real numbers together, you get a real number. And anytime you multiply two real numbers together, you get a real number as well. As you see right there, now just to illustrate that a little bit, Pick any two real numbers of any type and add them together, and you see you'll get a real number, you know, such as, say, 7 plus 2 thirds. All right, I've got an integer being added with just a rational number that's not an integer, and that gets me 7 and 2 thirds, or 23 thirds as a result. And the point being that when I added these two numbers that were both real numbers, the result was a real number and that works the same way with multiplication alright now what happens if you mix a dog with a cat two things that aren't the same thing I just want to show a funny picture more than anything else here well how about ooh, how about this cute little guy right there this uh, tiger dog who knows what that is but that's not closure alright so closure property is when you add two real numbers or multiply two numbers and you get a real number as a result now Next thing we want to talk about then is the commutative property. Now these next two properties, commutative property and associative property, are properties that people get confused because seemingly they do the same thing. We want to try to differentiate the two. And I want to do that by looking at their root words and seeing what they mean. Now the root word for commutative is just commute. And where do you see the word commute in a different context other than math? Well. I think of it as when you're traveling from one place to another. Um, two major ways this happens for people. One is if you're traveling from work to home or backwards, okay? Or if you're going from home to school, that's another commute that people often make, all right? But the point with commutative, when, when you're commuting, is you're going back and forth between two places. Or in other words, you're switching the order of a trip. You might start at home and then go to the workplace, and then you might go to the workplace and or start at the workplace and end up at home. You're going back and forth whenever you're commuting. But whether you're going from home to work or from work to home, you're covering the same uh, region, if you will. All right, it doesn't matter which way you go. Now, here's what I'm how I'm going to relate that to addition and multiplication. It's the commutative property. If you're looking at the commutative property of addition, what that means is that you're adding two things. And whether you add them forwards or backwards, you get the same result. For example, 
I'll just keep it simple here. If I add 11 and 7, I get 18, right? I would have gotten the same thing if I'd switched the order of the addition. All right, so whether you're going forwards or backwards with addition, you're going to get the same result either way. And that is true for multiplication as well. It doesn't matter when you're multiplying two real numbers, whether you do A times B or B times A, you're going to get the same result either way. Now, that's not true when you're talking about subtraction, for instance. If I did 11 minus 7 and then 7 minus 11, they would not be equal. And so you see why that property is actually worth mentioning then. All right. It doesn't matter the order that you add two things or the order that you multiply two things um, according to the commutative property. All right, so we've got closure property and commutative property covered. And I said this next one, people get confused with commutative property, um, and that's the associative property. And the reason that people get the, them confused is because um, they both deal with the order of adding and multiplying. The difference being how many things are being added or multiplied. All right, let me step back to the commutative property real quick. Whenever we're using the commutative property, we can always say that there are two numbers two nums involved, okay? So you're either, you're saying you could add five plus six and get the same thing as if you added six plus five. We're changing the order for adding or multiplying two things. With the associative property, you know, we're not working with two numbers anymore, we're working with three numbers. And we're talking about when we add three numbers, which two do we add first, doesn't matter. When we multiply three numbers, which two do we multiply first, or doesn't matter. And the truth is that it doesn't matter, ultimately, and that's what the associative property shows. All right, now my little picture to illustrate this, as I've had for everything, is these three little boys playing Frisbee right here. Now, if we're just trying to make sure that everybody touches a Frisbee, it doesn't matter whether this kid throws it here first, and then it gets thrown to this one, okay, that all three touch it, or... Maybe he throws it to the kid in the red shirt first, and the kid in the red shirt throws it to the kid in the yellow shirt. But no matter which order it occurs, all three players are still going to touch the Frisbee, right? Okay. Now, the other reason I chose people here is um, when we're talking about associative, you've got the word associate kind of built into there. And so we could say this kid here in the middle could either associate with the red shirt kid first or he could associate with the yellow kid or yellow shirt kid first, and either way you get the same result in the end. Here is the associative property. If I have three numbers A, B, and C, I want to find and I want to find their sum, well, it doesn't matter whether I choose to add the first pair of numbers and then add the third number, or whether say I added the second and third number together first and then add the result to the first number, I'm going to get the same result either way. All right, for instance, let's say I want to add the numbers 3, 7, and 10. Well, if I add 3 and 7 first, I get 10, and then 10 plus 10 is 20, right? Well, let's say I instead had decided to add the 7 and the 10 first, I would have gotten 17, and then add that to 3, I still would have gotten 20, correct? Okay, so it didn't matter which two of the three numbers I added together first. That's what the associated property is all about. You can think of it as the property in which the parentheses get moved around. And that's also going to be true for the multiplication um, associative property. If I want to find the product of three numbers A, B, and C, it doesn't matter whether I multiply the first two of them and then multiply by the third, or whether I multiply the last two numbers together and then multiply by the first, I'll get the same result. Alright, two more properties to go here. Let's take a look at the next one. And these next two get confused with one another as well, just because their names both begin with an I, and so people think, oh, it's one of those I properties. Well, yes it is, but is it identity property or inverse property that you're referring to? So let's see if we can help you um, understand what each is by relating it to something. Now, identity, you kind of know what an identity is, right? And the idea with the identity property is that you either add something to a number or you multiply something, a number by something without changing the identity of that original number. Kind of like in this picture right here, I've got this cat 
And whenever he puts that mask on, he's still the same cat, right? So he added a mask, but he didn't change who he was. Okay, well, what number could you add to, to a number without changing the identity of the original number? Well, if you add zero to something, you get the same thing you started with, right? So the identity property for addition would be that if you take a number A and you add nothing to it or you add zero to that number, you're going to get the same number that you started with. That number maintains its identity when you add zero to it. And a similar thing happens with multiplication, but not when you multiply by zero, right? If I were to take a number A and multiply by zero, that would give me zero. It wouldn't give me the same thing I started with. So when we're talking about the identity property for multiplication, well, you have to multiply a number by one in order to maintain its identity. So the identity property for multiplication is that any number, any real number A, multiplied by one, keeps its identity, stays the same thing A. All right, so that's identity property. And then the last property is called the inverse property, the last one that we're going to be discussing anyway. Okay, now, inverses in math, and not just in math, but in math specifically is what I'm referring to, are things that undo one another. All right, and so the inverse property of addition and the inverse property of multiplication are ways that you can undo um, something, in a sense. All right, kind of like if you construct buildings and you destroy buildings, they cancel one another out, right? When you end up with nothing, essentially. Okay, now the addition property, sorry, the inverse property of addition deals with the fact that you could take any real number A and there's a way to use addition um, where you could add something to that number A and it would cancel out and leave you with nothing. Okay, And the way you do that is you add the additive inverse or the opposite of that number. Right? If you add a number A with its opposite, it's going to give you zero every time. For instance, Say I take the number negative 7 and I add the opposite of negative 7 to that. Well, that's the same thing as adding negative 7 with positive 7, right? Because negative 1 times negative 7 is 7, and that gives you 0. Anytime you add a number with its opposite, they, undo, they cancel one another out and gives you 0. That's the inverse property is when you're canceling with addition. And then it's also when you're canceling with multiplication, except it works a little bit differently with multiplication. With multiplication, what I'm looking for is what can I multiply a number by in order to get 1? Because when you cancel with multiplication, you don't get 0, you get 1. All right, And it turns out that any time you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the product is always 1. That's the inverse property of multiplication. Okay, so... A reciprocal of a number is also called its multiplicative inverse. A times 1 over A is always equal to 1. Now, an easy illustration of that would be to take, say, that number negative 7 and show that I'm multiplying by its reciprocal negative 1 seventh. Okay, those are reciprocals of one another. And if you multiply negative 7 times negative 1 over 7, you would get positive 7 over 7, which is equal to 1, right? But the inverse property of multiplication applies anytime you multiply a number with its reciprocal. So let me give you one more example. Say you take 5 ninths and you want to multiply it by something that would cancel it out or give you 1. Well, you would multiply by the reciprocal of 5 ninths, which would be 9 fifths. This, this would give you 45 over 45, which is equal to 1, correct? So inverse property is when you're canceling through addition or multiplication and it works slightly differently from for each of those all right so you should now have a pretty good idea of what the closure property commutative property associative property identity and inverse properties of addition and multiplication are all right we haven't really talked a lot about subtraction and division because most of those properties well at least some of those properties don't work for subtraction and division the way that subtraction and division are in and of themselves but let's see how they can make them work with subtraction and division. All right, so I've already kind of told you that the properties that we've just learned for addition and multiplication don't necessarily work for subtraction and division. 
Like, for instance, we said 3 minus 4 and 4 minus 3 don't give you the same thing. Commutative property doesn't work. But if you think of subtraction as addition, then suddenly you can use those properties with subtraction as well. Now, what do I mean by using subtraction as addition? All right, well, anytime you're subtracting one real number B from another real number A, you could have also gotten the same result if you had instead added A with the opposite of B. Okay, so some examples. Let's say I wanted to find out what the difference is between 11 and 3. All right, well, you know that that's going to be 8. I would have gotten the same thing instead of if I had, instead of subtracting 3 from 11, if I had added, added the opposite of 3 to 11. Both of those things are equal to 8, correct? Now, say I had wanted to subtract 25 minus negative 10. All right, so I'm subtracting a negative number. Well, this idea still works. Instead of subtracting negative 10 from 25, what I could do is, is add the opposite of negative 10 with 25. So literally, I could make this 25 plus the opposite of negative 10. And that becomes 25 plus positive 10. And that's 35. Okay? And if you ever change subtraction to addition the way that it did, then suddenly the commutative property, for instance, works. Now, remember, I already said that 4 minus 3 is not equal to 3 minus 4. But if you do 4 plus negative 3, that is the same thing as negative 3 plus 4. All right. So anyway, you can subtract by adding the opposite of a number. That's kind of the point there. And then we can also divide, it turns out, using multiplication. Let's pick a... A fairly simple example here to illustrate this. Let's say that I was trying to find out what the quotient was for 100 divided by 5. Okay, well you know that that's going to be 20, correct? Well it turns out that you can do division by instead multiplying. And specifically what I mean is if I want to divide 100 by 5, I could get the same result if I instead multiplied 100 by the reciprocal of 5. If I did 100 times 1 fifth, well one-fifth of a hundred is still twenty. Those give you the same thing. Now where do you actually use this? Well normally you use this idea whenever you're um, doing division involving fractions. So for instance, let's say I wanted to divide three-fourths by one-half. Alright, well you were always taught this. Instead of actually doing the division with the fractions, what you're going to do is multiply the first number by the reciprocal of the second number. And that's because multiplying by the reciprocal of a number is the same thing as dividing by that original number. So I could instead do 3 fourths times 2. Isn't that the reciprocal of 1 half? And then do a little canceling. And I would get 3 halves as a result. 3 fourths divided by 1 half is the same thing as 3 halves. So you can divide uh, one number by another by multiplying the first number by the reciprocal of the second. All right, you know what you need to know now in terms of properties for multiplication and addition, and you know how to subtract and divide by adding and multiplying. Those were the goals here. Do a little practice on your own. Ask me in class if you need some further examples. We'll work on this more in class. Thanks for your attention. See you next time.